Hi, I'm Ethan. And I'm Georgia. And yeah, we're related. Ethan, what are we here to talk about? We're here to tell you, the viewer, the people at home, about Michael Bay's anti-cop agenda in his 2007 hit masterpiece blockbuster Transformers. How many ways can you say masterpiece? Dash what we liked about the movie, slash what could be improved. We are multi it on this channel. Actress, director, producer, YouTuber, lifeguard, who's to say what's next? EGOT. I mean, come on. For those of you that don't know what an EGOT is, <laughs> <laughs> let me just say Ethan Dippin. <laughs> Emmy Grammy Oscar Tony. Yeah, I don't have any, but I'm confident. Who are they? <laughs> Tony's hey, the guy Tony. from garden. <laughs> Tony, come get a slice. Hey, Tom. But before we get too head into it, we know what you guys are thinking. You know, there's a new new layer in the video again. Third, first video, the second video, they brought in the green screen. Third video now, what have they got? A new upgrade. And it's true, guys. I gotta watch. I just wanna rolly, rolly, rolly with a dab of ranch. Yes, it's anti cop. Yes, it's a cab. And I just feel like that's not how I remember the Transformers movies. So it's like an exciting rewatch for us. And we've learned lots of other little things along the way. And I thought I'd give you a quick little plot summary. The plot is. An ancient struggle between two Cybertronian races, mm. the heroic Autobots and the evil Decepticons find a, need to go to Earth to find a clue to the ultimate power. Held by a teenage boy. It could be you, 14-year-old viewer. Um, before we fully get into it, Ethan, I'd like to ask you a very important question. Hand to the Allspark. Are you an Autobot or a Decepticon? Does this answer your question? <laughs> Or no, not really. Or <laughs> not, obviously, come on. Come on. <laughs> this is obviously Bumblebee that I'm doing here. Like, what am I? What do we think? Were you deceitful, malevolent? Spell malevolent. Malevolent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. I'm a Decepticon. I'm a woman. I'm deceitful. Is that what you want to hear? Is that what you want to hear? I'm a woman yelling, so obviously I'm a Decepticon. But really, the reason the Decepticons have it for me is because, like, look, the Autobots, they've got, they've got values. Yeah, they're the good guys, but the thing about me is I love a name. Name for phenomena, as previously said, or just a name. I love a good name because my name's bad, Georgia, generic, boring. Could I be Bone Crusher? I could be Bone Crusher. I've crushed bones. Wow, you guys heard it here first. <laughs> first I've heard. Now let's address the elephant in the room. What is it? We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Uh. I'm recording this from bed. I realized that we never kind of established what the plot is, and it's a bit confusing. So, Sam is the main character played by Shia LaBeouf, and his love interest is Megan Fox. So, Shia LaBeouf gets a, um, a car, and that car turns out to be a Transformer Bumblebee. And the Decepticons are also after Sam, and it's because his grandfather had these glasses that have coordinates to the Allspark that they're after, and also Megatron, who's frozen in ice. And Sam now has the glasses, so that's why the Decepticons and Autobots are both, are, like, interested in him. And then the first military plotline <laughs> follows these soldiers whose base was attacked by Decepticons, and they're trying to get information about them back to the Pentagon. And then the other military plotline is kind of the other side of the government, and you know, these military analysts trying to figure out what happened to the army base that was attacked because they're not really sure. And then the last kind of thing, the last kind of plot line <clears throat> is to do with Sector 7, which is a secret government agency that knows about the Autobots and Decepticons. So that's kind of the gist of all the things going on that you need to know. Okay, our first introduction to the police really sets the scene of, you know, what Michael Bay is selling us. It's like, Sam has called the police because he thinks his car's been stolen, that hasn't been, it's just Bumblebee driving itself away. He's chased it, and finally the cops arrive, immediately, guns pointing at Sam, like, and he's like, hey, hey, like, guys, it's not me, like, I, I called you, they're like, get on the hood, pointing their guns on, like, I will shoot you! I'm scared right now. It's like the energy, and then he gets locked up, he gets arrested. And I didn't hear Miranda rights. I didn't hear them, and I hear them in every other film, so... Yeah, we've already got some egg cup agenda happening. And then there's this amazing moment. So essentially they flip his head on the hood, talk about a transition. We haven't figured ours out yet, but they transition into an interrogation. And let me tell you, this interrogation does not seem credible. I mean, I personally don't really know. 
What was that? Hmm? You eyeball my piece, 50 Cent? Oh, you wanna go? Make something happen, do it. Because I promise you, I will bust you up. Like, sorry, what is going on with so many things here? But quick note on the black scent. <laughs> when yeah. he's talking about 50 Cent, yeah. I'm like, okay, that is... Sorry. I oh, know. Anti cop. Anti cop. Like the cops are racist. But he's also he's like, so he's... highbrow. Michael Brown is he's so highbrow. He's threatening, yeah, a 17 year old with his pits. 50 cent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because 50 cent would do that. <laughs> but anyway, so he's like threatening this 17 year old with his gun. He obviously looks like an idiot. We're painted to this guy's silly. Good character actor. Like, I'm like, it's so believable this guy yeah. exists. Um, I think that. I really like thought this scene was like giving everything you want from like a silly cop scene. Like it felt very Twenty One Jump Street. Like I was like, oh, like Michael Bay is like he he's making fun of the cops. Like it's very like not just a cop. It's like the cops. Like these yeah. things are back to back. In case you guys weren't getting it at this point, that Michael Bay is against cops. One of the main bad guys. He's pretty much the only Decepticon you really see until way later on in the movie. He, yeah, he transforms into a police car and he's like savaging Sam. At, like Sam still thinks it's a police officer and he's like brutalizing him <laughs> and it's like okay wait i don't know if the audience is going to get this but okay. i don't like the cops decepticons evil cops decepticons <laughs> holy shit we're cooking <laughs> he was in the storyline like i've got this <laughs> and i got it too as a viewer yeah we don't like the cops but it's like then later on they introduce you know sector seven it's essentially the secret military police that mm. they know about the autobots and Decepticons, and so that's their role. This is like a do-whatever-I-want-and-get-away-with-it badge. Right. I'm gonna lock you up forever. Oh, God, you know what? Don't listen to him. He's just pissy because he's got to get back to guarding the mall. You, in the training bra, do not test me. Especially with your daddy's parole coming up. Literally too much. Okay, he's doing the most. He's got Shia, he's got Megan in the back of his cop car. Two 17-year-olds. High school, as he knows, because, you know, he's a researcher. He's a fucking... He's a Sector 7 man. He looked them up on IMDb. <laughs> and he's like calling Megan hot in so many different ways. Like what, at one point he's just like fully like looking her up and down, like ogling her. And then he's like, God, criminals are hot. It's like, we just established they were in high school. Yeah. Like, and then if that wasn't like enough, jump cut. <laughs> like Optimus, Optimus Prime, Prime rips the car off and is just like it was a bad idea to take the children. <laughs> Regrounding doesn't even just, call them teenagers, calls them children. children. Like regrounding that this guy's a predator and yeah. he is predating on Megan. And not only is he a predator, but he also is like threatening abuse of his power because he's like, I will lock you up forever. I'm like, people don't even know about Sector Seven. I can do anything I fucking want to you. Whilst calling Shannon the heart, it's like, what are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm so stressed. It's like they very they paint this guy as a huge fucking creep. Just like yeah, they paint all the cops in this kind of negative light. So Michael, we picked it up. We picked it up. We know the other student, but don't worry, we got ya. But he he gets it. He gets his what is it? His comeuppance because one of the Autobots pisses on him, which is like really. I think that's funny. Like when did we as a society get too cool for piss jokes? Like come on, guys, they're funny. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was silly. We were all laughing and so were the Autobots. Exactly. Come on. But what is the, the little, there's a funny little kind of, you know, he's anti-cop, but he's pro-military. The movie is so pro-military. The military are the good guys in this movie. It's like cops, bad. Decepticons, bad. Autobots, good. Military, awesome. Well, like, I mean, a good guy with a gun can sort of a bad guy with a gun. That's true. It's like, Guns are good, but not for everyone. Like, that's what Michael Bay is saying. And you know, I think it's interesting because it's obviously giving extreme nationalism. Like this movie's extremely nationalistic. It's like, yeah, America's the center of the world. So like, if they die, everyone dies. Like yeah. that's where the old spark is. And, well, before and, they know about the Decepticons, they've been hacked or whatever. Like their military base attack, they're like, that's it. Nuke the Middle East. <laughs> Whoa, China's involved too. Yeah. China's in Nuke Russia. Nuke Middle East, nuke China. They're suspicious of everyone. The movie is like sponsored by the military. So all the real explosions and military equipment you see is American military. And I was reading about it. They say, you know, it's good for the movie and it's good for the military. It's like, cause they get to show off their stuff. So it's like, you know, what is that? Is it like an indirect threat to the Middle East and China and Russia? Cause they get name checked in the movie. Like this is what we've got guys. So come on. And you know what? Maybe they're confused. They think they've got Autobots too. <laughs> I would be scared if I was like North Korea and I, they had an autobot, but I think it's maybe more like 
they're trying to get people to like enlist so that they have like more people in the army thing because like the good guys like save everyone. That's what leave the research in the mid, George. You're way off base there. While on the topics of, you know, good things about this movie, we're pivoting away from the anti-cop, you know, is it a big agenda in the movie? But onto other things that makes this movie great. And oh my God, Shia LaBeouf's performance in this. It's phenomenal. And has he done a lot of things off screen that we don't support? Absolutely. Absolutely. I could not agree more, unfortunately. Yes, his performance, incredible. Talk about a line read. I bought a car, it turned into an alien robot. Pop, that's the whole movie in one line, delivered by him with so much Riz I Died. However, his performance is off screen. Neither here nor there, but it's actually over there, so we're not going to go there. I would just like to also add to this very political agenda Mark is pushing forward. I think he's a feminist? Yeah, it is, it's because in this movie... We'll get into it. It's taking a very feminist approach, but he's kind of famous for being like, he writes like one dimensional women and like the women are just sex objects, which is honestly what my impression of this movie was until a rewatch as well. It was totally my impression. I was, was very much like, I feel like the way also obviously Megan Boss has spoken about her own experiences. We won't get into that in filming, but like rewatching this, like it's a very feminist take. I don't know if it quite passes the best shell test, but it's really incredible, like in all the moments, like I feel like the hero's journey of what this like, very classic film could be, like it's not like Shia that's doing the work, it's like Megan, like in the very first time when they have the altercation with the Decepticons, like Megan Fox literally like saves like Shia with a yeah. fucking like, I don't know, a drill. Shia is the damsel in distress in the movie. He's and the and damsel! And Megan Fox is the knight in shining on. Literally, so she does that really early on and then at the end, like again, like the biggest action scene, like of the whole thing when they're like bursting the big guy. Who's the big guy? Megatron. She's driving around, but she's like, Bumblebee, I'll drive, you shoot. Like, sorry. And like, Shia, what's he doing in this moment? He's just running away. I honestly don't know where he He's he, running away. He's not there. He's <laughs> not in the action. <laughs> He's not actually running away yeah. from the action, physically running away. But not only is it there the Shire and Megan Fox kind of dichotomy. <laughs> Did I use that right? The word dichotomy? Yeah. No. We'll leave it in there. The main analyst we meet is, yeah, this Australian woman in STEM and she kills it. And she's like essential to the whole plot. She's in so many scenes, has so many lines and there is no romantic aspect to her inclusion at all. Yeah. She's not overly sexualized at all. There is like gendered like comments like made to her, but they're not sexualized. Yeah. It's very like, this is like a character who deals with sexism in government and yeah. then still saves the day. And she's, yeah, she's shown to be the good guy. Cause there is so much of that, like, oh my God, the woman's nagging me when she's talking to the military people. Yeah, like, bro, like... she's trying to save the planet. <laughs> she's a little busy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, Michael Bay, slay. <laughs> Like my slay, I couldn't believe it. Like, so yeah, like women in STEM, Megan Fox. Another element that makes this movie so great, you know, they honestly they're like the the biggest to me the comic relief of the movie is the parents. They're so funny, and people do criticize the Bay Former. Sorry, just before you go, people criticize the Bay Former movies because there's too much of a human element, and yeah, you know. Parts of that are true. This movie shouldn't be two and a half hours long and there is three human plot lines going on. <laughs> but it's like the moments, like you see Sam and, you know, Shia's performance really elevate the movie and so do the parents. They just add a lot to I it. I completely agree. It's like these parents are B-side characters to the catalogue. They've got about 16 lines, I want to say, maybe across the whole thing. And they steal the show in every scene they're in. And let me tell you, Megan Fox is in some of those scenes. Hard to steal. Yeah, they, they do a really good job. They, uh, and they create like such a, a funny kind of family environment. Like when all three are in a scene, it's like, you know, you, do, you feel like you're part of the fucking family. <laughs> like, it's just very believable. And it's so funny how much the dad loves the lawn. Like he goes on about the lawn all the time. And hey, don't walk on the lawn, use the path. Like that lawn's for looking at. Well, we just wrapped up a phone call with our dad and he was telling us how the garden's completely changed. <laughs> We're going to be in for a shock when we go home because the garden, it's new. <laughs>
I feel like when you see the parents like in every scene, it's very like, you feel like you're at a sleepover. Like Megan Fox is like there as well. And then she's like just watching them interact. And it's like, you're the kid on the sleepover. You're like, oh my God, this family is being so weird, but I love it. I mean, this is them meeting Michaela, which is, you know, Sam's love interest. Friend of Sam's. <laughs> Gosh, you're gorgeous. Oh, so the... she can hear you talking, Mom. Yeah. Thank you. Let's, oh uh... my goodness, I'm sorry you had to hear our little family. Talk about a code red. Okay, your crush is over. Your parents are talking about masturbating. I hope I said that right. Correct me in the comments. <laughs> what masturbating? Yeah, you always get it wrong. <laughs> Somebody should have spoken to her about it, I guess. <laughs> Mom and Dad, you let her down. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> B, they are now talking directly to your crush and they're addressing her like she's your girlfriend already. Like, oh my God. And they're also talk they're, they're kind of not really, they're, they're talking about her in front of her. They're not talking to her. They're like, wow, she's so gorgeous. Yeah. Like, how did you do this? <laughs> yeah. Give me a fist bump. Yeah, the fist bump from the dad is so fucking funny because it's like, come on, dad, she's 17. But the fist bump move is like, yeah, pretty fucking funny from the dad. <laughs> Well, my son fucks. And the funniest part is that Sam p pays it too. It's like he's yeah, not, he's I didn't know like, like he's not embarrassed. Yeah, His dad like, hits him with a fist bump. He's, he's like, like, I love yeah, you, dad. Yeah. It's like you'd be like, no, dad. Yeah. Like, why? And while we transition away to the next good thing in the movie, here is another funny clip of the parents. Hey. Father and son. Father, Father and son. I mean, you don't have to call it that word. If that makes you uncomfortable, you can call it Sam's happy time or happy my time. special what? alone stop. time. Mom, with Judy, myself. stop. My I'm your... sorry. It's just been a weird night. I've had a little bit to drink. No, this is another human element that adds to the movie a lot. This is from like the fourth subplot. There's <laughs> this character, Glenn. He's one of the, he's a hacker and yeah, he gets kind of. One he's of, a man in STEM. He's a man in STEM and one of the analysts hired by the government, you know, illegally sneaks out information and gives it to him. Now he's involved. And he is another person who steals every single scene he's in. The most, his first, his first fucking entrance, he opens the door and he's like, shut up, grandma! But then he obviously loves his grandma because he's like, don't walk on her carpet. Yeah. She does not fucking like that. Especially when it's the police, he says. <laughs> Producers for the clip. Get off that grandmama's carpet! She don't like nobody on the carpet, especially police! You're so endeared to this character but he like literally immediately sells out his friend. She did it! She's the one you want! All right. And you're still like on his side. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, love you. Love you, Glenn. And then he also like, right before this, he does the most amazing thing, which is so me. It's like, there's a whole plate of food and he goes, I'm not guilty. I ate the whole plate. Yeah, the whole plate. <laughs> whole plate, eaten. It's like, babe, like they put a whole plate in there because you're going to be there a while. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I wish I was like him because if I ate the whole plate, I'm feeling guilty. I just ate a whole plate of donuts. <laughs> Anyway, so this guy's a hacker and so are we because we know about LimeWire, so we could really relate to this character. Anyway, he is, he's, another, he's another side character. He's not in that much, but he's so every he's just so funny. Telling your grandma to shut up. <laughs> so tough. But now we're on to the things that, that we didn't like about this movie. Number one, honestly, this is my complaint about a lot of movies, so maybe it says more about me than the movie, but this movie is way too long. Two and a half hours for like an action movie about transforming cars. It's too long. <laughs> like, you, how much can you see before you're like, okay, like, I've seen it. Like, I'm ready. I've seen Bumblebee yeah. and I'm ready to move on. Yeah. yeah, there's too there's too many subplots. Like, one subplot's fine. Like, three subplots. Like, yeah. come on, Michael. I know. He's trying, come on. He's trying to do, like, a love, actually. <laughs> you know, all these three seemingly unconnected stories and in the end, they all connect. And it's oh, like, my God. Transformers and Love Actually from the same cinematic universe. <laughs> Yeah, the movie is way too long. And because they've got all these subplots, it's like, it's really honestly confusing what's happening. We had to play multiple times like, what, what, what's happening? Again? What is happening? And despite the fact it's so confusing, there is a lot of exposition. Yeah, every single time we were like, what's happening? Like the next scene, someone would be like, this is what's happening. And we'd be like, we're still like, I don't really get it. I'm like, can you, can you reel that back again? <laughs> it's like he obviously knew that the plot was getting confusing because it's hilarious how many times somebody does say exactly what's happening. It's like insane. Like, I just can't believe it. Because like, I still like towards the end, I'm like, wait, so once we have the all spark, which by the way is very key to the plot apparently, I'm like, what are we doing with it? Yeah. Like, why is it so powerful? 
are we destroying it? Are we keeping it? Are we giving it to the good guys? Get it away from the bad guys? Are we like, what's going on? The reason we didn't do a plot recap is because we couldn't. We had no <laughs> clue. Like, what would we say? What's important? Where do we start? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, we can't plot recap for you. You just got to watch it, babe. This is a highly complex film. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've got something to say. Uh, I don't, do we want to hear this? <laughs> Let us know in the comments because I'm kind of like... We've been recording for a while now. I'm getting a bit hungry. Well, like, make a fucking sandwich. Jeez. Um, so I need to speak to the costume designers because I'm obsessed with the fact that this is obviously from 2007 and Shia LaBeouf is wearing a The Strokes t-shirt, a little rock band JJ's moment t-shirt. They're like, oh, like, he's looking cool for this movie. Let's put him in a Strokes t-shirt. Yeah. It's like modern day, you'd put them in a Minions t-shirt. <laughs> exactly. That kind of equivalent. That, that yeah. kind of equivalent. And I think it's like amazing like, throughout the film, essentially, like as something that's a bit of a time grab is that like all the soundtrack is like intense rock music. It's like- It's all Linkin Park. It's like the majority is Linkin Park <laughs> and there's a bit of Nine Inch Nails sprinkled in. <laughs> and then a little bit of Go-Go Dolls. <laughs> Go-Go Go-Go? I've got no idea. But either way, it's like crazy. Like every time like an intense action scene's happening, they're like, somebody put on a power cord. Cause it- <laughs> Nothing really matters. I think it's like really like interesting because I feel like in movies now, tell me if I'm wrong, I feel like if there's like a cool scene happening, like we have tend to have a bit more like hip hop and like rap music playing. It's like, yeah. oh, something cool is about to happen. Like put yeah. on a track, Kendrick. Yeah. And I was like, wait, did features not exist in 2007? Because like talk about a soundtrack, like there's always a feature, like Doja Cat feature, like mm-hmm. on like the Elvis soundtrack, like Slay, Love, like now, like not a single feat. Track list one to 12, none. Lincoln Park feet Doja Cat. When? <laughs> when is that coming? <laughs> Let me the know. The culture needs that. So you've made it to the outro. And you probably noticed like the, the positive section went a lot longer. We love this movie. And there, there is a lot to love about it. We, we kind of, we could have kept going on about the good things. We tried to keep it brief. And then we Us tried to- keeping it brief 45 minutes later. <laughs> and we tried to keep- the bad things long and we just couldn't we were seriously trying to write in more bad things but it's it's really good yeah and you know i like that this you know family action movie takes a political stance i love a strong political stance come you on know, now it's feminist it's anti-police i mean what more could you want and Other- it's entertaining <laughs> and it's entertaining so i think what we're gonna say to you humble viewer go watch it go watch it seriously i mean maybe like no. And let us know what you think. You're probably in bed watching in this anyway. Like, just fucking put it on. Let us know in the comments if you watched it, what you loved about it, what you hated about it. Yeah, definitely. Wait, I think we're supposed to say like, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. So if this is the end of the outro, there's only one thing left to do. Oh. <laughs> First time. Oh, that's never that's, happened. Yeah. <laughs> that's a m- magic moment on camera. <laughs> this transformed into a sick gun. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. (laughs) Sorry, transformed into an awesome gun.